Welcome back to the Knowledge Academy's YouTube channel. In today's video, we will be demonstrating a beginner level project to create a library management system using Python. Object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm based on the concept of objects, which can contain data in the form of fields and code in the form of procedures or methods. A key feature of object-oriented programming is the ability to create reusable code which can lead to more efficient and easier to maintain software. We've explored these concepts in our past two videos on Open, where we delved into the basics and saw how these principles can be applied to solve various programming problems effectively. Today, we'll put those theories into practice once more as we build a library management system. Let's see how we can use object-oriented programming concepts to make our code more modular and flexible. To start coding our library management system, you'll first need Python installed on your machine. Today, I'll be using Scikit, a popular integrated development environment or ID, which is great for Python projects. You can download it from JetBrains' official website if you haven't already. However, if you prefer using a different environment, that's totally fine. Visual Studio Code or VS Code and Sublime Text are excellent alternatives, offering extensive plugin ecosystems and robust community support. Even simpler options like Notepad++ or just the basic Notepad can work if you prefer a minimal setup. Each tool has its strengths, so choose the one that best fits your coding style and comfort level. Let's now get back to using SciCalm and start setting up our library management system project. Once you have SciCalm open, go to File in the top menu and select New Project. This opens a new window where you can specify your project details. In this window, you'll need to give your project a name. I'll call ours Library Management System, then select a directory where you want this project to be saved. By default, SciCalm will set up a new virtual environment for our project, which is great as it helps manage dependencies and keep our project isolated from other Python projects on your system. Make sure everything is set as you want, and then click Create. SciCalm will take a moment to set up your project environment, which includes creating the virtual environment, where we'll install any libraries and run our code. After your project is created, SciCalm will open it up with a default workspace. You'll see the project directory on the left side, this is where we can start creating our Python files. It's for our library management system, we'll initially create two files, one for our book class and another for our library class. Now that we've set up our project in SciCon, let's start coding our first class. Open up a new Python file in your project and name it book.py. This is where we'll define all the behaviors and properties of a book in our library management system. First, let's define our class by typing class book. We start with the init method, which, as you might remember from our previous videos, is the constructor in Python. This method is crucial as it is automatically called whenever a new object of this class is instantiated. The self parameter is a reference to the current instance of the class, which is a common practice in Python to access variables that belong to the class. We are passing two parameters here, title and author. These parameters are used to set the title and author of the book when a new book object is created. Inside the constructor, write self.title equal to title and self.author equal to author. This assigns the values of title and author to the instance variables of the same names. Additionally, we'll initialize an attribute called available by setting self.available equal to true. This attribute will help us track whether the book is currently available for borrowing or not. So, what we've done here is set up our class to take in a title and an author every time a new book is created and initialize it as available for lending. Having established our constructor, we can now move on to adding more functionality to our book class, such as methods to handle borrowing and returning the book. We will start by creating a borrow method. Inside this method, we add an if statement to check the book's availability. This checks if the available attribute is true. When we call this method, if the book is available, we'll change the available attribute to false, indicating that the book has been borrowed. Then we return a message stating that the particular book has been borrowed. 
in the else block. If the book is not available, we return a message stating that the book is not available for borrowing. Next, let's handle the scenario when a borrowed book is returned. We'll define the return to library method for this. Inside this method, we'll use an if statement to check if the book is currently not available, which means it is borrowed. If the book is indeed borrowed, we set self.available to true, marking it as returned, and then provide a thank you message. If the book is already available, which means it was not borrowed or has already been returned, we return a message stating that particular book is already available in the library. This prevents any confusion about the book status. These two methods borrow and return to library, encapsulate the behaviors we need for managing a book's lending status within our library system. They make it easy to update and communicate the status of each book transparently. With these methods added to our book class, our books can now be borrowed and returned with clear notifications about their status. Next, we'll build on this foundation by creating a library class to manage a collection of books We'll do this in a new Python file called library. In this file, we'll define our library class that will hold and manage multiple book instances. Start by importing the book class from our previously created file. Now, let's define our library class. Inside this class, we'll start by defining the init constructor. In the constructor, initialize an empty list called books. This list will store all the book objects Next, we'll add a method to add books to our library. Define the addBook method and simply append the past book object to the books list using self.books.append. This allows us to expand our library's collection. To view which books are currently available, we'll add a displayBooks method. We start by creating a list to keep track of all books that are currently available. For each book in our library's collection, we check if the book is available for borrowing. If a book is available, we take the book's title and the author's name and put them together in a nice format. So, we gather all these formatted strings into a list. This way, we have a list of all the books that are currently available, each represented by a string that includes its title and author. Once we have this list, we check if there are any books in it. If there are, we join all these book descriptions together into one big string, with each book on a new line and return this string. If there are no available books, we simply return a message that says no books available in the library. Now, we need a method to manage the lending of books from our library. To achieve this, we will define a method called lendBook which accepts a single argument, the title of the book to be borrowed, 
Afterwards, we will check if the title matches, and if the book is available to be borrowed, if both conditions are met, we proceed to call the borrow method on that book object. Similarly, we will define another method to return the book to the library. The return book method will call the return to library method from the book class if the following conditions are met. Condition 1. Book found. The book with the given title must exist within the library's collection. This ensures that the operation is only attempted on books that are part of the library. Condition 2. Book borrowed. The book must currently be marked as not available indicating that it has been previously borrowed. If both these conditions are satisfied, the book's return to library method is invoked, which updates the book's availability status back to true and typically outputs a thank you message, acknowledging the return. Else the method will return a message, stating that the book was not borrowed from this library. Next, we create three instances of the book class. Each instance represents a different book with a title and an author, we have At Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling 1984 by George Orwell To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee Next, we create an instance of the library class, which will hold and manage our collection of books. We then add each book to our library using the Add Book method. This method appends each book to the library's list of books Finally, we display all available books in the library by calling the display books method. This will list the titles and authors of all books that are currently available for borrowing. Next, we will attempt to lend a book from the library by invoking the lend book method and then display the books again to ensure the changes are accurately reflected in the collection. Then we will try returning the same book back to the library and check if it is getting reflected again. So that concludes our demonstration for today's video on creating a simple library management system using Python. We've walked through how to utilize Python classes to model real-world entities, such as books and a library, and how methods within these classes help manage book availability effectively. By following this tutorial, you've seen firsthand how to implement basic object-oriented programming in Python to build a functional and organized system. In the next part of our series, we'll tackle a more advanced project. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more exciting and informative content. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss an update.